Nigel Farage is the great freedom lover. He, of course, hosts a great show on GB News. You can get that via flashnews.com.au. But each and every week, he joins us here on Paul Murray Live. He's also coming to Australia. We'll give you the details of the tickets in a moment. So, great man, you are right now in this frustrating position of being 100% right, yet the normal people by their millions are being screwed over in the energy crisis in the UK, yet the obsession about it amongst those with any power to actually do something pulling a lever of government, they're just looking around, twiddling their thumbs, and it must burn you up that normal people are being crushed at the moment in the UK. Yes, it really does. And 20 years ago, I started talking about this as I saw subsidies being put on people's electricity bills to give to landowners, you know, billionaire landowners in some cases, to put wind turbines on their land, or it was given to foreign multinationals who bought the, uh, the, the turbos and the blades manufactured in China. Uh, and, yeah, you know, I've warned all the way through, this was a disaster, that energy is something where we should be independent, we should be secure, yet we rely on other countries. And so we decided we put sanctions on Mr Putin. Well, that's worked out nicely, hasn't it? Gazprom just announced their first six months profits, $36 billion. Um, and what you see going on here is Europe and the UK, the euro and the pound, are now sinking fast against the US dollar. That's because Trump made America energy independent. And as the pound falls... The cost of energy goes even higher because it's all priced in dollars. On current rates, I can now see British inflation, and I really mean this, going over 20%. I can see a sterling crisis, and all of it done by Boris Johnson, Theresa May, Tony Blair, of course, started the whole thing. And those of us that warned about this, we were deniers. Climate change deniers. We were the worst people that ever walked the face of the earth. So, yes, in summation, deeply, deeply frustrated. So give me an idea about the next Prime Minister. If it's, you know, Liz Truss most likely ends up there. I think he gets announced sometime in the next four years. Um, where is she on this stuff? Will she feel the burning need to deal with people in the north that will be bloody cold and without a capacity to heat themselves, will she feel any urgency to change something or is the sort of atrophy inside the government, inside the public service, inside the energy companies something that she just won't bother engaging with? Well, worth remembering that when she stands in front of the steps of Number 10 Downing Street next Tuesday, she will be our fourth Conservative Prime Minister in six years. I mean, it's almost like a comedy sketch, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you couldn't make it up, really. Um, where is she? Oh, I've no idea, and nor does she. I mean, I've absolutely got no idea. She says she wants to stick to the net zero target, yet at the same time, she's for more oil and gas exploration in the North Sea. And that's what I call a good old-fashioned mixed message. It means that on this issue, she really... I don't think she really gets it. I just hope that common sense prevails and that we move immediately to producing onshore gas, coal if we need it, more money going in for North Sea oil, and end this obsession. Net zero has done this country immeasurable harm. And here's a little warning to Australia from the old country. You know, you've decided now to go down this net zero route. Look at the blooming mess we're in. The only way you can achieve net zero is to export manufacturing jobs and mining jobs elsewhere and to import vast amounts of energy. By doing that, you see, your CO2 goes down. Globally, it makes no difference, but yours goes down. And if Australia really wants to beggar itself, well, you'll stick with your new net zero plan. Look at us. Please don't do it. Bloody oath. All right, finally, let's talk about beavers. How do they get involved in uh, helping when it comes to water shortages? I just don't know. It's another, it's another fantasy of the upper middle classes that have dominated the Conservatives for the last few years. Boris Johnson announced at last year's Conservative conference that 30% of our agricultural land would be turned over to rewilding just left to go wild. And that meant beavers would come back. He said it wasn't just a case of building back better, but building back beaver, which shows you how completely <laughs> out of touch with... <laughs> I, 
I mean, you, you I'd just, buy the T-shirt. I don't like the policy. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't make it up, could you? <laughs> Good on you, great man. Thank you, Nige. Uh, Nigel Farage is coming to Australia. NigelLive.com.au. I also love his uh, promotion everywhere with a big fat stogie. I look forward to sharing uh, one with you when you're here at the end of September. 26th in Melbourne, 27th in Sydney, 29th in Brisbane. NigelLive.com.au. Buy lots of tickets, including an extra one for Dad. I'm sure he'll love it for Father's Day.